sorry, so just to admit this, I'm also a DACA recipient. But like our information is now in the system. It's now in the government. It's going to be handed over to the next administration, and we don't know what's going to happen. Are ICE agents going to come to our house? You know, are they going to come and take us away? Uh, we don't know that, right? So there's a palpable fear um, around this entire situation. But I'm really worried for not just dreamers, but uh, the undocumented population in general. Yes, right. Uh, so uh, tell us about the status of a DACA. As I understand it, these are people like you who came, were brought here by their parents as children. You know, mm -hmm. they didn't say one day, you know, I'm not feeling comfortable in this country where I live, so I'm <laughs> going to um, pack up and move, right? I mean, right. so you came here when? How? I came here when I was a two-year-old, so I had no say in how I was able to come to this country. Yeah, right. Um, my family, we were escaping a domestic violence. You know, and it was from from Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, I, I've stayed here my entire life, and it's one of those situations where all I know of home, the word home, of means course. America. Yeah. Even though my passport is green and it's a Taiwanese passport, everything I I know is very American. Um, but you know, like people like me, we're now planning out how we're going to proceed. You know, I've had to tell my boss there's a possibility I may have to take a leave of absence. You know, um, I, I may not be able to work for a while after Trump come, takes office. Um, and, you know, these are conversations that are playing out across the United States with other people who may not um, have told their bosses in the first place that they were undocumented uh, because they were given this legal uh, work authorization. Um, and there are going to be kids who can't go to college anymore because they can't afford the tuition because perhaps DACA provided them the ability to get scholarships. I have heard so many stories from people in the last 10 days who are either dreamers mm -hmm. or no families with them or work with people and, and you know, the same stories. There's, I mean, incredible amount of apprehension among people right. and uncertainty over their future. I mean, just yesterday, uh, talk to talk to a couple, um, right. and uh, now the, you, you today. I mean, so there is this real palpable fear. It is, I, but but it's it's not based on nothing. It's based on Donald Trump's promises and statements. Well, his promises has certainly put a lot of people back into hiding. From what I understand, you know, I've been calling around to immigrant advocacy groups, and people are telling us, well, people are packing. They're packing to go back to these home countries that they haven't been in for years. Um, and I was at an immigrant advocacy group on the night of election, on the no, election night. And I went there around 11 p.m. So that was about when we knew that Donald Trump would yeah. be elected as president. And people were just in tears, absolute tears. They were like, I don't, I don't have a plan B. America was always my plan A, B, through Z. Um, so it's, it's certainly something that is going to make us all, again, afraid of being undocumented. And for many of us, we're openly undocumented. So it remains to be seen what's going to happen in the next administration. Haven't you been here long enough to apply for citizenship? No, because if you're undocumented, you don't have that pathway. You can't get into that pathway of citizenship. Oh, I see. When you come here, I didn't mm -hmm. realize that. So it's never, ever? No. <laughs> no. That's not. That's not um, that would be part of comprehensive immigration correct. reform. Yes. Right. Yes. right. But correct. not part of the executive action. Yeah. Okay. Now, also, another group, of course, he has targeted, at least verbally so far, yes. are Muslims. Gosh, right. yes. Yes. Uh, with the this guy from Kansas, Chris Kobach, right? Is he is my favorite evil genius. I just, yes, his name is Chris Kobach. Emphasis on evil, <laughs> the evil genius. It seems very medieval. Uh, and, and what is his contribution here? What is his role with Donald so, Trump? So, um, Chris Kobach is currently the Kansas Secretary of State. And he has been the architect of all these great, you know, successful, in a in an evil way. Let me preface that yeah. evil way, um, anti-immigration legislation in states like Alabama, Georgia, Arizona. He's even had played a hand in passing like housing laws in places like Farmers Branch, Texas, and in Hazleton, Pennsylvania. So he's been able to make life as difficult as possible for undocumented immigrants. And it's worked. A lot of these legislations have worked. So you is he working with the Koch brothers? What is the name of that uh, group? You know what I mean? They're, we haven't talked about them for a while. They they write legislation for states. They did the voting rights stuff, and they did the uh, stand your ground yep. laws. I'm forgetting. Um, I'm blanking on it. 
kind but of a, also okay. blanking. Yeah, but, okay. Um, so Kobach has been very successful in driving undocumented immigrants out of these states. So, for example, in Arizona, after SB 1070, that state's harsh anti-immigrant law passed, we saw um, a lot of educated immigrants leave because they just didn't want to stay in a place where they would be racially profiled. We saw a lot of undocumented immigrants leave and um, in places like Alabama and Georgia where they do rely on agriculture. Uh, you know, a lot of the fields went fallow. Um, and it was certainly, it was certainly um, a hard time to be an immigrant in those states. And now with the Muslim registration, this is. Um, so he's sorry. he's but but no, it's just he's talking about setting up a registry, right? Yes. So that Muslims would. Uh, the, the, I mean, what would that mean? First of all, could they even get in if they're Muslims? So wasn't there a religious test? First of all, he was going to talk about. Is it? Is it either or, either banning all Muslims or letting them come in but having this registry? Well, Trump has certainly, quote unquote, softened his stance on a yeah, Muslim right. ban, right? Initially, he said he wanted a complete and total ban on okay. Muslims. All right, now and then just... now it's just extreme vetting. <laughs> oh, yeah. And as part of the extreme vetting package, he, uh, his administration is thinking of registering, making a lot of these people who are coming in from terror-prone countries, in quotes, um, to make them register when they come into this country, but also for the people who are from these countries and who are living here in the United States, they also have to register. So this particular program called the National Security Entry Exit Registration System, or NSEERS, it's actually been in place before. We've had it for almost a decade since 2001, since the terrorist attacks in 2001. And we did it so secretly, basically, that nobody really, um, revolted against this. And now now that I think Kobach and Trump has labeled it as a uh, Muslim registry, now we're finally coming around to the idea that this is bad. And I saw, I don't know whether it was Kobach or one of the Trump advisors said, well, of course we can do this. We've done it before. We had internment camps oh, for God. the Japanese during World War II. Oh my God. Um, clearly, that was a bad idea. We know that Japanese internment was a bad well, idea. We <laughs> all know that, but does the president of the United States know that? Well, the new president of the United States thinks that it's a good idea. Right, right? the new president, right. I should say. Yeah, not the um, president. Good grief. I, I do think that alluding to something that was that awful in which the yeah, United States yeah. government had to formally apologize, right? I don't think that's a... Uh, a system that we should look to to be like this is what we should strive for right yeah. and particularly with this n sears program it rounded up many many immigrants um people who were on work visas on student mm -hmm. visas even people who have been living here for a very long time um, i think over eighty three thousand or so immigrants had to register sixty thousand of whom were immigrant men so there was this one process called the special registration this is part of the component where immigrant men and boys over the age of 16 had to do annual check-ins. Um, and they had to go in for fingerprinting, photographs, interrogations, and then they had to register at local immigration offices. So it was under the pretext of saying, under the guise of saying that we're going after terrorists, yeah. that um, we were able to put more than 10,000 people into deportation proceedings. I don't know of how many of those people were actually deported, but that's how many people we put into deportation proceedings. Um, and here's the kicker, right? Not one single person um, was deported or arrested for a terrorism-related conviction. So mm. that's how effective that program was. Yeah, right. All of that money and all of that effort and everything. Uh, uh, and then it's just... Uh, non-productive at all. Didn't, exactly. Didn't, didn't, didn't prove anything. Esther Lee is with us. She's immigration reporter for Think Progress, looking at some of the most troubling um, implications of a Trump presidency and has a lot of people scared to death right now, and rightfully so. We will be right back. Uh, you uh, have an experience like this that you want to share? 866-985-4255. 866-985-4255. 